this lesson, we look at enthalpy and how we can calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction. Whenever there is a chemical reaction or a physical change takes place, there is also a change in energy. Chemical reactions usually involve a change in the amount of heat energy. This is because whenever we break bonds, energy is required. The reactants absorb the energy from their surroundings. Whereas forming new bonds releases energy and the products release the energy into the surroundings. Enthalpy is the amount of energy that a substance has and this is also given the name heat content. So sometimes you'll hear it called enthalpy and at other times it will be written as heat content. Reactants and products will have energy as either kinetic energy or potential energy. And this energy is lost or gained as heat. The net energy change for a reaction is determined by finding the difference between how much energy was absorbed to break those bonds in the reactant compared to how much energy was released when new bonds formed to make the products. The overall energy change or the enthalpy change is also called the heat of reaction. And to calculate this, we go enthalpy of products, or the amount of energy the products had, minus the enthalpy of the reactants, or the amount of energy the reactants had. So the triangle means change in, the R stands for reaction, and the H stands for enthalpy. So the change in the enthalpy of the reaction is enthalpy of products minus enthalpy of reactants. If more energy is absorbed from the surroundings to break the bonds between the reactants than is released into the surroundings when new bonds form to make the products, the reaction is called endothermic. In an endothermic reaction, the temperature of the surroundings decreases as the reactants absorb more energy, breaking the bonds between them. If we were to touch a test tube, while the reaction is taking place, the test tube would feel cold to the touch because energy is abs being absorbed from your hand into the test tube by those reactants. The reactants have less energy than the products as the products contain the energy absorbed from their surroundings. We can calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction by going enthalpy of products minus the enthalpy of reactants. So in this case here for the energy diagram, the products have 40 kilojoules of energy and the reactants have 20. So if we go energy of products, 40, minus the energy of the reactants, 20, we see that the enthalpy change is 20. For an endothermic reaction, the, endo the enthalpy change is always positive as the products have more energy than the reactants. If more energy is released into the surroundings when bonds form between the new reactants than is absorbed from the surroundings to break the bonds between the reactants, then we say the reaction is exothermic. An exothermic reaction will feel really hot if you were to touch the test tube. And this is because excess energy is being released into the surroundings and therefore moving into your hands and heating up your hands. The reactants have more energy than the products and this is because more energy was released when the bonds formed between the products and this energy was released into the surroundings. Because enthalpy change is the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants and the products have less energy, the enthalpy change for an exothermic reaction is always negative. So in the energy diagram here, the products now have 20 kilojoules of energy and the reactants have 40. So 20 minus 40 is negative 20. A reaction always requires an initial input of energy and this is used to break the bonds between the reactants. So this is called the activation energy and it is the minimum amount of energy that must be supplied to break the bonds in the reactants and start a reaction. We see the activation energy on, energy on any energy diagram as that 
hump between the reactants and the products. And so the activation energy is the difference between the energy of the reactants and the energy at the top of that hump in the energy diagram. In the next two lessons, we will be looking at ways we can calculate the enthalpy change or the heat of reaction, which is the energy change of a reaction.